<laughs> your period, your era with uh, with Megadeth is is probably the most prolific and and certainly the most popular and successful. I mean, it was uh, you had a heck of a run uh, with the band, and I know that when you joined for Rust in Peace, uh, there really wasn't much room for you to contribute to the songwriting. But that changed with every subsequent album. You had more and more uh, influence on each of the albums from a songwriting perspective. Um, that's not true. Well, that's no? not true right there. Okay. No, set the record not... straight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the record is set completely straight in my book, oh. um, about the songwriting process. Um, but I'll just tell you that, um, it was, uh, not as you say, um, uh, when I joined the band, there was, uh, like a couple songs, done for rust in peace maybe three songs um that were the song structures were done and written and um the rest of it was done completely as a band unit and um i i i went into great detail in the, on this and um yeah, rather than saying it now, I just rather you read it because it's very clearly articulated and that's fine. Uh, there's no okay. When, when is your book uh, going to be available? In the in it's the... available now for oh, pre-order. Oh. It comes out in December. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you go to uh, dreamingjapanesebook.com, dot uh, com, you can uh, get it now or at Amazon dot com. It's already available for pre-order. And there's a lot of specials, like special editions and autographs and okay. all that type of stuff. But uh, And what's the yeah, title? That mega- what's what's the title of the book? I'm it's, so the title is called, it's called Dreaming Japanese. Oh, right. Okay. And um, I think there's a lot of unanswered Megadeth questions. And there's a lot of unanswered um, Hawaii questions and cacophony questions. Cool. <laughs> Not too many people ask the Hawaii questions, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, they, they're, they're, they're all answered in there because Ooh. I think it's important in a book like this to really expose everything about the person who, whatever era of my career someone might be interested in, I think it's important to know everything that got you to that point. So there's like, all the details of my first band deuce and then the the Hawaii and Vixen and all that stuff and cacophony. And of course, Megadeth, I think people are going to be really genuinely surprised at the clarity of detail in the Megadeth times, because it's not something that I've talked about since I left the band Mm. and the stuff that I did talk about while I was in the band was very much, kind of promotional, you know, talking about the guitar parts and mm-hmm. talking about we're, we're touring this part of the world now. It was very, you know, promotional interviews and stuff like that. But very rarely, if ever, probably never on a personal level at all. So I think people are going to enjoy reading that. And then, of course, everything that happened after that, everything, um, you know, because my life is just in a complete... Uh, 180 after that and all the, all the Japanese stuff I think it's going to open a lot of people's eyes but like uh, you know back to Megadeth I, I think people were real they're going to really enjoy it I think it's going to be very uh, a very pleasant read for them because they're going to like oh I didn't know that oh I didn't know this and and just a lot of things that don't get talked about and that I really never had an opportunity to bring to light and a lot of good things and well, a lot you've, of uh, you've always been a little bit of a a mystery to me and i mean as as a fan uh i mean uh i didn't know a whole lot about you but i sure have enjoyed your work throughout your entire career so i know that thank you very much and so <laughs> for much. for the most part i think um the book will be a a pleasant eye opener to yeah. your life and times that yeah, you because, that you haven't talked about and uh I, I i'm looking forward to checking that out yeah the, i mean the reason i sort of framed the question the way i did is because i think most people if you go out on the internet which i'm guilty of uh and that's what most people do you kind of get one representation of of that era of megadeth and i think what marty's saying is 
you can't always believe what you read on the internet and he's going to tell his side of the story in this mm -hmm. book and i'm really uh intrigued now because <laughs> Um, I want to hear his side of the story and we won't make you blurt it out all right here because we want people to read the book. But that's very, very interesting that you you offer that contrasting um, uh, perspective, because I hope I hope at the very least you're very proud of all that time with Megadeth because you gave us some incredible music and whatever the the drama may be or the conflict or friction or whatever you want to call it. And uh, between you and Mustaine or, or whoever, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I hope it didn't sour the experience to such a degree that you can't look back on that time in your life and be uh, proud of all the great music you gave us as fans and listeners. Well, absolutely. Um, I think you're going to be very, very pleasantly. I don't know about surprised, but uh, I'm incredibly proud of all of that time in Megadeth, what we did. Um, what Megadeth did for my career, it was absolutely my first step into the real world of the music business and how incredibly grateful I am for that opportunity. I think sure. uh, people are, there's absolutely no sourness mm. related to Megadeth at all. Yeah, there's yeah. absolutely no negative feelings uh, and none of that. So there's no like, kind of bashing kind of uh there's no negativity there's just truth there's just all the things are exactly from my eyes how it happened how i wrote it i was completely clean and sober the entire time i was in the band um i didn't even drink a beer um when i was in like 14 15 and 16 i was a maniac i lived like three lifetimes of doing all the drugs, all the drinking, all the partying, all the rock star shit in my first band, Deuce. Um, I did so much of that. And there was something that made me just stop cold turkey right there, which is a long story, which I got into. But um, by the time I was in Megadeth, I was like straight edge, way before straight edge was even a term. So I remember all that stuff with clarity and great appreciation. So you know, like you said, people read things on the internet and I would hate for people to think that I have any negative feelings towards that era because it's absolutely not true. Um, uh, some of the, my favorite music that I've made in my career was done in that, in that period of time. So I really enjoyed outlining exactly the process, how all that music got created, how it got made, how it got put down to a, uh, tape and um it was a definite process and it was a process that was only um only megadeth did this one process and all the projects and bands and and artists i've worked with and all the albums i've made on my own before and since megadeth had a unique process of making music and uh i got into great detail of what that meant to me and how it worked for me and all that stuff so um you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, feeling bad about music that you love um, because it, I'm equally as proud of it. And, and I know how you feel because sometimes, like if I like a piece of music, I'm kind of afraid to find out what the artist thought about making that music um, <laughs> because you're afraid they're going to say like, um, I didn't like it or this sucked or I could, I wish I didn't do that then that kind of shoots down something in you because as far as I'm concerned, the music I like, that's mine. I like a piece of music. That's mine now. I like it. So I don't really want to know, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Phil Spector's music. He's like my idol, but he's wow. absolutely an abhorrent human being. Yeah. Absolutely worse. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to really yeah. know about that because the music is mine. The music yeah. is mine. Yeah. So it, yeah, I'm really afraid to talk to my heroes. And I remember one time when I was a kid, my friend, one of my great idols, Uli John Roth, Ooh. Um, my friend wrote Uli John Roth and Uli John Roth wrote him back a letter. Wow. And he was talking about the songs he liked and didn't like when he was in the Scorpions. And I'm like, oh, no, I like this song, but Uli doesn't like it. And it's like, I know as an artist, he wants to be true and 
and say the truth. And I, I respect that. But I remember feeling, you know what, if anybody asks me about something, I'm going to be careful with how I answer that because, uh, you know, the fans own the songs now. You know, once you put them out there, it's theirs and their memories are connected to them. So I, I try to be as honest as I can. And um, thankfully, I don't have regrets related to music that I've released. So if someone says, you know, this particular song means something to me, I can, you know, relate a good story about that because I'm very fortunate that I've not released much anyway that uh, that I wish that I hadn't released. So um, hopefully uh, you can kind of rest assured on that front. Yeah. But there will be a lot of details how things got the way they were. That's, That's for sure. awesome. Well, I, I know that I'm, I'm, I can't wait to read that book because I'm a big fan of that period of Megadeth and knowing now that there is a side to the story that hasn't yet been told makes me all the more interested, especially when it's coming from the man who was there. So 